good evening and welcome to the Planning Commission meeting for the City of Pacifica for January 21st, 2020. Roll call, please. Commissioner Berman. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Here. Commissioner Kraske. Here. Commissioner Bigstick. Present. All right, let's have a salute to the flag. Commissioner Berman, would you be so kind? Yep. Berman. All right, uh, on to administrative business. Uh, approval of the order of agenda. Anyone want to make a motion? Commissioner Berman. I move that we approve the order of agenda. All right, Commissioner Kraske. I second that motion. Got a motion and a second. Please vote. I guess the other light is mine, huh? Here? Okay. All right, uh, onward to uh, designation. Oh, let's see, approval of the minutes for November 4th, 2019 um, and December 16th, 2019. Uh, any? Oh, good. Commissioner Bigstick. I move approval of minutes. All right, we have a second. Commissioner Berman. I second the motion. All right, we've had a first and a second. Please vote. All right, that passes. Next on, uh, let's see, no need for a designation of liaison to the next city council meeting, I see. So on to the oral communication portion of the agenda. This portion of the agenda is available to the public to address the Planning Commission on any issue within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission that is not on tonight's agenda. The time allowed for any speaker will be three minutes. You just fill out a card that's located in the back and turn it on in. Uh, let's see, I don't have any cards before me. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? You could wave your hand. And this would be for something not on the agenda. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I don't see anyone, so we'll just move on. Moving on to consent items. First one, this is for an emergency coastal development permit filed by the applicant Jason West for demolition of a project uh, projecting concrete patio to the rear of an existing primary structure located at 1112 Palmetto Avenue. Uh, the recommended action is to receive and file. Staff report, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, it's possible to pass this without a staff report as a consent item. Um, briefly, as noted in the written report, um, this property owner has experienced uh, progressive bluff erosion. In response to that, um, has needed to conduct the demolition of a concrete patio which now projects over the bluff face and so in order to accomplish that demolition uh, it's necessary under the city's coastal development regulations that <coughs> he obtain a coastal development permit um, when it's not possible to wait for a regular coastal development permit process to be completed um, it is possible for the planning director under certain emergency circumstances to issue an emergency coastal development permit that is the case in this instance, and the city's ordinance uh, requires uh, that the planning department staff provide an informational report, and that's what this evening, uh, this item is this evening. Okay. <coughs> um, I guess we could just vote on this now if we wanted to, without that's discussion, right. unless somebody wanted to, anyone wanted to, okay. Well, um, thank you, and if anyone wants to make a motion, happy to entertain it. Or if folks want to discuss it, uh, Commissioner Bigstick. Yeah, I move to approve consent. <coughs> uh, second, Commissioner Berman. I second the motion. Before All right. the vote, oh, sorry. Did yes. you open public comment for this item? Do we need to for consent <laughs> items still? That's fine. I thought we didn't. My bad. Sorry, I I apologize. I didn't realize it was on the consent calendar. No, okay, no problem, no problem at all. I was confused as well when I <laughs> asked for staff report. So, um, okay, we've had a, a motion and a second. Please vote. And that passes unanimously. All right. 
Onward to the actual public hearings. Um, next up is the annual review of a cannabis retail operation located at 2270 Palmetto Avenue. Uh, recommended action is to adopt the attached resolution. Staff report, please. Good evening, commissioners. I'm senior planner Christian Murdoch. Police Chief Dan Steidel is also present this evening to participate in this agenda item. <clears throat> the item before you is the first annual review of a cannabis operation under the city's cannabis regulations. The subject operation is a cannabis retail operation known as the Fog Center, which is located at 2270 Palmetto Avenue in the West Shark Park neighborhood. As explained in the staff report, staff's inspection and evaluation of the cannabis retail operation found it to be fully in compliance with the city's cannabis regulations and the conditions of approval imposed on the operation by the city. In particular, the operation has not caused public safety or public nuisance conditions attributable to the site. After receiving public comment, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt the attached resolution to find the subject cannabis retail operation in full compliance with the city's cannabis regulations and the conditions of approval imposed on the operation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, any questions for staff? Not seeing any. Um, oh, Commissioner Bigstick. Sorry, I did have just one question. Um, have there been any calls for, I read it, I read it again to make sure I was understanding it. I wanna make sure I um, ask the question one more time in case anything happened over the last five days and make sure that everyone in the room and everybody watching on television hears the answer. And if I said if it's changed in the last few days, have there been any calls whatsoever for service um, regarding the Fog Center whatsoever? We, we have zero calls. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to open this up. Well, I would open this up for a public hearing, but I am not seeing any cards. So uh, I'm going to close public hearing unless I see any hands shoot up. Don't see that. Okay. Then I'm going to um, bring this back to the Commission for Deliberation. Anybody got anything to say? All right. Oh, Commissioner Bigstick, you do. I don't have much to say. Um, the only concern I possibly had going into this was has there been any uh, issues caused by the Fog Center being there since this was the first um, approved permit and uh, our adventure in uh, cannabis use began here. And it sounds like there is absolutely no cause for alarm whatsoever and so far everything is running swimmingly and smoothly and with that I'm happy to make the motion if I can find it in my packet. No other discussion? Shall I make a motion? Uh, Commissioner Berman. I was going to make the motion if Commissioner Big Stick can find it. All right. Looks like we have a second teed up. So I move to adopt the attached resolution to find the annual review of the cannabis retail operation is exempt from the California Environmental Equality Act to find that the operation of the cannabis retail operation at 2270 Palmetto Avenue, APN 016-294-570 is in full compliance with the requirements of Article 48 of Chapter 4 of Title 9 of the Pacifica Municipal Code and to incorporate all maps and testimony into the record by reference. All right, Commissioner Berman. I second the motion. All right, we've had a motion and a second. Please vote. All right, that passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, thank you to Chief Steidel for showing up. All right, onward. All right, our next public hearing is consideration of a draft local coastal plan, local coastal land use plan of the local coastal program, the LCP, and recommendation to City Council. Uh, the recommended CEQA action is statutory exempt and the recommended action tonight is to adopt the attached resolution. All right, staff report, please. Good evening, honorable commissioners. I am Associate Planner Bonnie O'Connor. 
Before we get started, I wanted to note a discrepancy in the formatting of the post-consultation draft LCLUP, which was published with the agenda packet. Chapter 6 was inadvertently located behind Appendices A and B in the reference section, and Figures 1-1 and 3-6 were left out of the document. The missing figures have been distributed to the Planning Commission and are available to the public in the back of the room. This formatting error will be corrected for the next public hearing. Those who are viewing the document on PlanPacifica.org website have access to the corrected version. However, staff opted not to republish the agenda packet after realizing the formatting problem to avoid confusion with any commissioners or members of the public referencing the original packet numbers, packet page numbers. The Pacifica Local Coastal Land Use Plan, or LCLUP, is a policy document for the long-range development of the portion of the city of Pacifica within the coastal zone. The coastal zone in Pacifica is comprised of all areas west of Highway 1 and the Shell Dance Nursery located east of Highway 1. The LCLUP is sometimes referred to as the LCP, or Local Coastal Pro Program. However, a LCP is actually made up of two parts. The LCLUP, which is under consideration this evening, and the Implementation P Plan, or IP, which is made up of the zoning ordinance and other activities which implement the policies of the LCLUP. The LCLUP being considered this evening will require updates to the city's IP following certification by the Coastal Commission. Combined, the city's LCLUP and IP form the certified LCP, which allow the city to assume permitting authority for development in most areas of the coastal zone in Pacifica. The city's current LCLUP dates to 1980. Due to the plan's age and, more importantly, the change conditions within the coastal zone over the last 40 years, an LCLUP update is long overdue. New areas of the coastal zone have developed or redeveloped as compared to 1980, and new planning issues have arisen since then as well, which, are, which call for an updated policy approaches to address them. The post-consultation draft LCLUP being discussed this evening is the culmination of more than 10 years of planning and community engagement. The city's work to update the LCLUP component of the city's LCP started in 20, or 2009, leading to a 2014 draft which was released to the public. However, for various reasons, work on the LCLUP was then placed on hold. The city resumed work on the LCLUP by undertaking a focused sea level rise adaptation planning process from 2017 to 2018 and re-engaging with the residents and stakeholders through a significant public outreach project process in 2019. In October 2019, Council approved the release of a consultation draft LCLUP for, to the Coastal Commission staff to review and cons for review and consultation purposes with the intent of obtaining initial comments for the city's consideration. Coastal Commission staff reviewed the document in October and November 2019, and city staff received comments from the Coastal Commission staff on November 22nd. Staff then posted the Coastal Commission staff's comments on the Plan Pacifica website and opened a public comment period on both the consultation draft and the Coastal Commission comments, which ended on January 3rd. Staff has reviewed the Coastal Commission and public comments carefully. Where appropriate, staff has suggested edits, which are contained within the post-consultation draft LCLUP, the version being discussed tonight. Following Planning Commission's review of the post-consultation draft LCLUP, Next steps include bringing the plan before the City Council for review and adoption of a resolution certifying that the LCLUP is intended to be carried out in a manner fully in conformity with the California Coastal Act. At that time, the final draft LCLUP, inclusive of any additional City Council direction, will be sent to the Coastal Commission for review and certification. The Coastal Commission has 90 days with the potential of an additional 12-month extension to certify um, with or certified with suggested modifications or deny the final draft LCLUP. Depending on the Coastal Commission's actions, uh, the plan may be required to return to the City Council for further consideration. Staff appreciates the time spent by the Coastal Commission staff to carefully review and comment on the consultation draft LCLUP, as well as the significant time spent with the City staff during meetings and phone calls during the consultation period. City staff also respects the significant knowledge Coastal Commission staff possesses on matters pertaining to the Coastal Act. Accordingly, staff accepted a majority of the suggested suggestions provided. 
However, some of the Coastal Commission staff comments highlighted the difference of opinions which remain between the two agencies on a small number of key issues. In hopes of finding new ways to resolve these differences of opinion, some of which have been present since 2018 when Coastal Commission staff first commented as part of the city's sea level rise adaptation process. City staff has proposed new definitions and policy language on matters related to the Coastal Commission staff's request for definitions of redevelopment and existing development and policies to address major alterations to existing development up to and including redevelopment of site. These changes proposed by staff respond affirmatively and in good faith to the Coastal Commission's comments in a way which reflects the existing and historic development pattern of Pacifica, including significant pre-coastal act subdivision of land, development of structures, and establishment of public rights of way to serve both of them. Moreover, the policies articulated by staff reflect the Coastal Commission's unambiguous support for the protection of the pre-coastal act development. In addition to Coastal Commission's comments, staff accepted public comments on the Coastal Commission's edits. Approximately 75 comment letters were received prior to the close of the comment period. Staff has reviewed the comments, grouped them by general subject matter, and provided responses. After publication of tonight's staff report, two additional letters were received by staff and have been distributed to the Planning Commission and are available in the back of the room, uh, available to the public in the back of the room. The staff report also addresses four private property owner requests. Those requests were considered and responded to in the staff report, with staff recommending to grant one of the requests and take no action on the remaining three. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission, after receiving public comment and deliberating, should adopt the attached resolution, which would recommend that the City Council should adopt a resolution certifying that the local coastal program is intended to be carried out in a manner fully in conformity with the California Coastal Act. This is the necessary step for the City Council to approve the LCLUP and advance it to the Coastal Commission for certification. Please note that since this is a legislative matter, the resolution will require four affirm affirmative votes by the Commission for adoption. Thank you and staff is ready to answer any Commission questions. Any questions for staff? Okay, well, seeing none at the moment, I'm sure there will be some later. Um, I will open this up for public comment. So if anyone wishes to comment, please fill out a card at the back of the room. I see some cards coming in. Now is the time. All right, um, you'll have three minutes to speak and I'm just gonna open it up and start with Richard Harris. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Richard Harris. I'm speaking for the San Francisco Public Golf Alliance. We uh, have several thousand members in the Bay Area, about 700 in Pacifica. Uh, so we are representing uh, users of low-cost public recreation in the coast. Uh, and the, uh, I, I want to point out that the uh, Coastal Commission's uh, environmental justice policy talks about the value of the coastal zone, not just the beach, the coastal zone. And they talk about it in, uh, for, for purposes of coastal weather, when the inland areas are heating up and the air quality is bad. And so, uh, and so this, is a, this is a environmental justice policy about making public low-cost recreation available, not just to residents, but to the rest of the state. Uh, we have addressed that uh, issue in our comments um, 16 through 18. Uh, your draft says that the Pacifica does not have a, uh, a 
uh, an environmental justice policy. In fact, uh, the Pacifica City Council in May of 2018 uh, adopted environmental justice goals and quite explicitly talked about uh, the need for uh, uh, public recreation, talked about the need for low cost housing, and they addressed it at, uh, at goal number three of, of, the, of the city's goals. That is ignored in the, uh, in the uh, current draft document, and it should be uh, addressed, should be acknowledged that that the Pacific is already there. Additionally, uh, in addition to, um, to uh, practices, uh, this should be, uh, the city needs to have actions, and this is, that's in our comment on 16 to 18, uh, uh, on the uh, environmental justice issues. There is a major issue with the, uh, of inconsistency in the, uh, uh, in the language of, of, your, of the draft, which says that the entire Coastal Act is uh, incorporated into the draft. But in fact, uh, Appendix A only has one of the 10 uh, uh, set chapters of the Coastal Act, Chapter 3. Uh, and, and that needs to be changed to be consistent with what the language says. Uh, there are a couple of additional points. We have gone through it in great detail in, in a letter that I've delivered to you tonight. Thank you. Uh, and ask that you review it carefully. Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay. Um, next up, Keith Fromm. Good evening, commissioners and staff. Um, my name is Keith Fromm. I'm a co-owner of those lots known as the Fish Lots and also a portion of the abandoned Edgemar Road immediately adjacent to it. A um, couple things. One is I, I did try to submit uh, comments um, on January 3rd, which was the deadline for submitting comments to the draft, and a very strange thing happened. Every email that I sent to anyone with the Pacifica, um, a City of Pacifica email address got bounced back to me, so I tried it by fax, and that got bounced back to me, too. So I don't know if anybody at the city ever actually got, on January 3rd, the, the, the documents that I sent. I did send a copy to uh, Michelle Kenyon as well. I don't know if she's still your city attorney, uh, uh, outside city attorney. Anyway, um, basically, my, my concern is this. The um, fish lots for time immemorial were uh, had an intensity of medium uh, density residential, uh, which would allow 15 units per acre. Uh, for some reason, um, the, the draft proposes that it go down to low density residential. I would think that with the housing crisis that we have, particularly in the Bay Area, and the fact that Pacific has always strived, but I don't think ever achieved its, its housing goals, that it would be a step backwards to, to uh, downzone the property rather than at least leave it as it is or even make it more, uh, more dense, uh, allow more density. So I would ask basically the city, I don't know procedurally how to do this, but uh, that uh, that portion of the local coastal plan uh, just be modified so that the, the density, proposed density of the property remains the same as it is now and, and has been for time immemorial. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, next speaker will be Cheryl Carlson. Um, I'm present uh, tonight on specific, my name is Cheryl Carlson. I'm representing the Carlson property tonight. Um, I'm present tonight to hear if you discuss the Calson position paper we submitted for public comment. In the PC staff report, LLCLUP backslash LCP recommendations to city council, uh, which was a document that was in like the, the first um, email that I received about the meeting tonight. 
On page 8 and 12, it is stated that the property owner requests to change the proposed land use designation for its property. We did not. We uh, did ask for greater clarification in the CRMU designation. For example, that residential without mixed use is permitted as long as there is a component of commercial mixed use on the site. This had been discussed by Ms. Wehrmeister and other city leaders by email, and perhaps Ms. Wehrmeister could address this. We did ask for greater density, citing the following. Our property is the only one with three to five units per gross acre. Low density is defined as three to nine units per gross acre. Since the, de the density was decreased substantially from 22 units per gross acre, we are asking for a better compromise. An affordable housing project was presented to planning over the summer. The project assessment could possibly have continued if the density were three to nine units per gross acre. When reviewing table B, the RHNA allocation, the city needs more housing, particularly in low income levels. If you look in our document, in, uh, I've included that table on page three. Recently uh, implemented state legislation requirements are important, SB 330. Thank you. Uh, you have, I think, one more minute. Okay. All right, next up would be Jeff Goulet. I got that right. Uh, close enough. I'm Jeff Kier. All right. All right. Uh, good evening, staff and council uh, commissioners. Um, I have some comments on the definitions that are in the uh, post consultative draft. I'll hand out a couple copies one to staff and one to uh, uh, commissioners. Unfortunately, I only have one copy of each for each. Um, the, a lot of these definitions I have problems with because they're not, uh, they don't define well enough what they should be, in particular redevelopment, uh, which is defined as when development as defined in section 30106 of the California Coastal Act consists of alteration including interior and exterior remodeling and renovations, demolition or partial demo, demolition, etc of major structural components, it's considered redevelopment. Redevelopment is considered new development in uh, a lot of this. And so what happens is if somebody did any sort of remodeling, uh, changed the, the structure of their, the uh, footprint of their structure, added a new window to an external wall, constructing a new fence, replacing a roof, all of these would be, uh, make the, uh, uh, structure considered redevelopment and these new rules would apply to them. There also needs to be an exclusion due to fire, earthquake, or flood so that if uh, someone's house burns down and they try to rebuild it, that it's not considered redevelopment and subject to new rules that would prevent them from building in the first place. Um, there are some uh, Definitions, well, actually, there's one part in there. I'm sorry, I'm wandering here. Uh, there's one section in there, the uh, post-consultative draft that talks about it adopts the maps and figures within this document. And some of those maps, in, in particular, the vulnerability maps, were specifically rejected by the city attorney. They went into great lengths in October of making a disclaimer at the bottom of each one of these maps saying they cannot be used for any future planning, permitting, anything. And by saying that we adopt all the maps within the document, it's negating that and they need to be, that needs to be removed. Um, there are other things like existing structure. What happens if a, uh, an existing structure is considered a structure that has, was previously permitted? But what if somebody had a permit for something in 1980 and no one can locate the permits anymore? The city's destroyed the permits or the, the building owner can't find it. Is it now a uh, non-conforming structure? 
just we need to have that ironed out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Sam Casillas. Hi, good evening, Planning um, Commission and um, Planning staff. Uh, first of all, I really, want, I really want to let you all know that we really do appreciate all the hard work in trying to juggle so many interests. But in the interest of that, I just want to start, start out by saying that the City of Pacific continues to ignore climate change science in regards to flooding and coastal erosion hazard zone in the LCP process, which must include a full manager tree plan. Coast Commission has already stated this is within their jurisdiction and, and this is what needs to be done. Also, the state's guidelines that the city has um, been directed to utilize that the state's uh, nature resources safeguard in California um, continue to be ignored as well. Um, this document states that an opportunity to achieve broad environmental benefits is through the use of natural infrastructure solutions to mitigate climate change, including the restoration and conservation of natural systems such as wetlands to provide more resilient natural systems and offer protections from climate impacts. In my previous letter to the comments that were pretty much ignored, um, there are four specific areas that, that have these hazard policies should be amended. The fish and bowl property is one. Um, this property funnels water through its basin, cause, causing severe runoff, and any development endangers um, the road and the neighborhood to the north. The quarry in Rockaway Beach, this property would be an ideal for um, taking flooding pressure off the developed area and storm surge on Highway 1. The Rockaway Headlands, this property is in danger of major bluff erosion where the majority of their property will fall into the sea, yet the city has recommended permanent structures including a restaurant. Then we have the Pedro Point Wetlands, it's also known as the Calcium Field. These wetlands have been listed in the federal the Fish and Wildlife uh, Federal Wetlands Inventory, which was ignored, it have been illegally ditched by both the city, we found out, and of course the property owners themselves without proper Coastal Commission permitting. And there is no up-to-date and verify hydrology report. I've been the one providing hydrology information. If you look in the packet, there is one section that the owner, when they mowed the property, water has continually been bubbling up. So why isn't this being considered? And the property has been zoned commercial recreational, and according to the Coastal Commission, in vulnerable hazard zone, we should consider conservation when we're looking at that. So the city has not providing any evidence to the, quant uh, to the contrary that it should be a different um, density and in including residential. Additionally, the, the Coast Commission also asked for further detail about the potential hazards in there and no additional detail is provided. You all are just putting it on the potential development there, yet you change the designation. How does that work? You're supposed to address that in the EIR. So, thank you. Uh, next up, Danny Estrella. Okay. Uh, next up, Aaron Gregory. Hello, thank you for letting us get up here and speak. Um, my name is Aaron Gregory, this is my wife Jackie Gratz. We own a Pacifica-based t-shirt company called Cotton Crustacean, and uh, we are hoping to open our flagship first storefront here in Pacifica on Sharp Park um, in our home, which is commercially zoned as of the last 60 years, which is now set to not be commercially zoned as of the new plan. So. Uh, we started talking to the city in June 2018. We called Christian, um, ran the idea by him of what we want to do is we're going to pick up our little tiny house, a whole story. We're going to build a whole new story underneath, uh, which will then be an entire commercial retail storefront. Um, in doing so, the house will be picked up eight feet and moved back, allowing for two parking spaces, which will get our two vehicles off the street, which will be great for the neighborhood. Um, we are currently located 184 Paloma, so if you're familiar with Winter's Tavern, as I'm sure most of us are, we're directly across the street from that. I can 
Here are the cue balls on the pool table, literally in my office. Um, we're behind El Toro Loco's uh, old location. Uh, there's an apartment building right next to us that is set to go full commercial and office, so directly to the east of us. Across the street, next to Winters, obviously we have an empty lot there um, owned by the tow truck company, Miller O'Brien, and that is set to become a new commercial development as well. So we are surrounded by commercial properties on all sides except for the west. Um, we are dear friends with our neighbors to the west. They're all very excited. They actually help us run our pop-up shop at FogFest and whatnot, um, and or babysit our kids when we're doing FogFest. So uh, essentially what it is is I'm a scientific illustrator. I design t-shirts with marine animals on them. And this store will be a science-themed boutique. Um, selling shirts will be the main focus, but we're going to have other artwork from local artists, fossils, artifacts, books that I've either illustrated or just, you know, support, um, science-themed toys, you name it. So if you're familiar with the store Paxton Gate down on Valencia in the city, science-themed, really beautiful kind of interior design, natural history. Um, I'm part of the board of the Ocean Discovery Center, Pacifica Ocean Discovery Center that we hope to see someday. Consider this like the super micro version of that, that can maybe plant the seed for that future develop development. Um, but yeah, uh, and we also hired an architect and we're well on the way. So the plans are in, the check cleared, we're hoping this all goes through. Um, so we're just asking to, if we can please maintain our commercial zoning that the property's had. It's part of the reason why we bought the house back in December of 2013, was this idea to be able to have a business there someday. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That was my last speaker card for the evening, incredibly, considering uh, what we're discussing. Yes, absolutely. Turn it in after. So <clears throat> hello, I'm Cindy Abbott, and I'd like to request that the City of Pacifica Planning Commission hold off on passing the local coastal plan draft to the city council. It seems rather ironic that in the same meeting, an agenda item calling for an emergency approval of demolition um, for a concrete patio projecting over the ocean and crumbling into the sea was, was just passed and approved. It, it's not ironic, though, that on January 13th of 2020, at our first city council meeting of the year, the council approved for the 47th time um, a motion declaring a state of emergency along our coast from West Line Boulevard to the end of Beach Boulevard. We have a problem in the city of Pacifica and it needs to be addressed. And the draft local coastal plan does not take a strong enough stand to do that. We need that longer view to go beyond a draft that focuses on armoring and beach nourishment. In fact, a statement in the responses on page 32 of the <coughs> staff comments notes that Pacifica's development pattern with significant pre-coastal act private development and public infrastructure leaves no other viable near-term policy than to focus on protecting and armoring the shoreline. I think that that early development shows exactly why we need to be taking a much longer and stronger view at this time. We don't want to have the community, planning commission members, city councils, or citizens dealing with what we didn't want to deal with at this point in time. In fact, earlier today, um, a post went out from the City of Pacifica Government Services noting that mitigation investment means spending now to save later prevent risks from getting worse, protect lives and property from being damaged or lost, educate people to be aware and prepared and work together to build a stronger and more resilient community. So I hope that we can do that together. I remain hopeful that we can find that middle ground that we're not just trying to put concrete and rocks on our shoreline and destroy our beaches but that we're looking for that longer term vision, which includes managed retreat and at least talking about it, educating the public about what that might mean for the city, because there's been a lot of false information spread about that concept. 
So I look forward to hearing your conversation as you proceed tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay, that is my last. If we have more folks, yes. Uh, just deliver the card to staff and um, you can go ahead and go up to the podium. If there's any more people who wish to speak, now's the time to bring the cards up. Hi, sorry I'm late. I'm Joanne Gold, and I'm here um, representing the Pedro Point Community Association, and we had already submitted a comment letter on the uh, Coastal Commission comments on the LCP. And um, I just wanted to add, I don't want to repeat those comments already. We pointed out all the ways that the um, recommendations long-term from the PPCA and the residents of Pedro Point, you know, echo the um, belief that we should not be using the, turning the Calson Field into any form of residential land use. Um, but as I was reading through all the other comment letters and looking at all of the, the, uh, the issues with managed retreat, and it just strikes me as, you know, this is just an opportunity to avoid 10 years from now having the same conversation. The, the, the property that we're talking about in the Calson Field is gonna be subject to all kinds of sea level rise issues, um, storm surges, and if we can avoid putting residential houses in the same position that so many of our residents today are in now, having to decide on managed retreat, um, I'm really hoping that you will do that and you will heed the comments of the Coastal Commission and, and consider them carefully. Um, we really can't kick this can down the road any further, and many of you, I think, have long-term um, commitments to the City of Pacifica, and I'm sure you don't want to be listening to another group of residents 10 years, five years, 20 years, who knows how long it will be, but if there is residential development on that Pedro Point Calcium field, I think you'll be having to face with another same type of crisis um, with, with residential properties being put in harm's way on that, on that property. So please consider it carefully and I'm looking forward to hearing your conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any more public comments. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I'm still incredulous that this is all the public comment that we're getting tonight. <laughs> so excellent. I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Rob Burko. I just recently moved to Pedro Point. I made that decision after falling in love with the city of Pacifica, right? Today, I've heard a few comments uh, that have got me thinking about some things. And I had a whole thing I was going to tell you guys, but I think it comes down to legacy. We all have a decision to make about how we preserve the character of our neighborhoods by balancing future growth alternatives and initiatives that keep the environment in mind, as well as the reason why we like to live here. I don't have the answers on what that looks like, but I think you guys have a very good sense of what that could look like. And I think you've taken that into consideration with a lot of the feedback and the comments. However, it's still very unclear to me what exact, what exact proposals other than acronyms have been kind of thrown around. So I'll heed to the other folks in the neighborhood and in the city who have been here a, li a bit longer, as well as the property owner to help decide what that looks like. But some of the proposals that we've seen that I read, by the way, I'm real new to this. I read all the docs. I haven't read the one that wasn't updated today, but I think I got the gist is that there are things in there that I think we need to take a moment to consider. And in the land use, the traffic, the infrastructure, and the character of the neighborhood, I think are incredibly important. And I think the points that were made today about managing, manage retreat, I don't think we, you don't need to retreat if you don't make a decision to go somewhere in the first place. And if you do make that decision, you measure twice and cut once. So I think that we've had some really great proposals and we have a lot to consider, but I would, caution us to change the proposals in any way that would change the character of the neighborhood um, if we find out that the wetland studies are valid and rightful as it appears they are from the record that I've seen. I think we should hear, adhere to federal guidelines, state guidelines, and other considerations as we think about this because I've only been there about a month or two and there's crazy water running down the hill all the time. And so as I think about that and where it's draining, I think there's a lot to be said about the environment that's there and what we may be doing to change or impact it as we think about the character of that neighborhood 
the, the infrastructure that supports it, as well as the additional foot traffic. Now, that's not to say that I don't want a delicious restaurant or a place to get my hair cut and a place to create jobs in the neighborhood. I think that would be a very interesting idea. But again, I haven't really seen any finite proposals other than some acronyms and, you know, got to retain beach access, you got to do this and you got to do that. It all sounds fair and valid when you read it on paper, but it'd be great to, as this progresses and as we have more of your considerations taken into account, that we see a little bit more specificity as to what this means to not only the neighborhood, but as well as the environment. And I think that's a theme that I heard tonight overall across from many different people, that there's a lack of clarity. So I would look to the city council, the planning commission, as well as the uh, other organizations to provide a bit more clarity there when we're asked to make decisions about things that are important to our neighborhood, our legacy, and our future. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Yes. All right. Hi, my name is Sheree Chan, and I've been here since 2008. And I just wanted to clarify that the, des the pre existing designated land use for this Kelson field is commercial with an emphasis on coastal related and or visitor serving uses. So when people speak about a change, I think the reason why the Pedro Point neighborhood is so reactionary is that is what we see and anything else, including the addition of residential, um, ill-fated residential homes in a place with known hazards is going to be a problem for our neighborhood. We're concerned that we're, we're creating a bigger problem for the planning department and you guys have been doing such a great job and have so much on your plate already and we just don't want to make this worse. Um, I really also appreciated that you made the distinction between having, you know, having different rules for existing development versus new development because I think that's what we're all trying to prevent is making these problems harder for the next generation. So thank you for all your hard work. All right, thank you. I'm just pleased to deliver that card to staff. And if there's no other public comments, I'm going to close public hearing and bring it back to staff for deliberation. Uh, Commissioner Bigstick. Bring it back to commission for deliberation. What did I say? Staff. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Good catch. Mostly I'm asking staff anyway. It makes sense. Um, so before getting into anything too meaty, which I imagine any other question would be, um, the uh, question of the property upon which the cotton crust station might be setting, might be setting up shop, um, the concern essentially is vis-a-vis -vis this document, they wouldn't be able to necessarily have what they're planning. Um, could you just address that for a moment? Is this a document that if we don't tweak it would preclude their business or um, does it look like their business is underway as they would like it to be? Right, so on packet page uh, 103, uh, we summarize um, the city staff's assessment of <clears throat> the situation. Uh, the draft uh, that you're reviewing this evening would change the land use designation to a residential only designation, which would preclude the application that they filed from uh, having the potential to be approved in the future. And so uh, without the change, they would not be able to uh, obtain approval of their current proposal. So the change is necessary to enable them to have their project be approved. The change that is going forward is necessary? The change that they've requested. Oh, the change that they've necessary. requested, okay. So right now, is that the change that's going through or? I'm so sorry. the recommendation is to uh, grant the property owner's request okay. to change the designation from medium density residential in the current draft to mixed use neighborhood. I, I believe that needs to be a part of the motion. Perfect, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Oh, and last, uh, Commissioner Nevelin, and I forgot to mention that he, uh, he'd walked in about halfway through the public comments. And thank you, and sorry for being late. I was at, at a school board meeting I had to, to attend uh, for work. Uh, but um, I just had a real quick question about the maps that I, I think it was Mr. I'll probably mispronounce it uh, as well, Mr. Gallet, uh, uh, 
there were certain maps that I, I'm not sure I track that completely, but uh, it was making reference to some maps that were rejected or that the, uh, perhaps the city council had made some comments about. Can I, can I get a little clarification on that, please? Sure, so I believe Mr. Gay is referring to the coastal vulnerability zone maps, which are part of the LCLUP in Appendix B. Yes. Um, those maps are important for application of certain policies in the LCLUP, including areas where hazard analysis is required uh, prior to approving development. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Guillet rightly described a process whereby um, ad additional disclaimers and qualifications were added to the maps to ensure that they were used appropriately and for the intended purpose of estimating the location and approximating the location of hazard zones, but not relying on them or, or suggesting they have a uh, site, site level accuracy, for example. They're based on models which um, are important and valuable, but they're not uh, a substitute for a site-specific engineering and hazard analysis, for example. Thank you. <coughs> and if, if I could add to that response, um, Mr. Guillet may have been keen in on a separate um, discussion of maps, diagrams, and land use classifications um, on packet page 130. Uh, and this is outside of the chapter six, um, coastal resiliency um, chapter where, where that chapter six contains or has the um, disclaimers in there. And so we may need, just need to make sure that this chapter one paragraph um, has a proper reference to some okay. of the disclaimers that were in chapter six. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, was Commissioner Berman? Okay. Um, just touching off of that, and actually it was a, a question that I had to ask staff as well. Um, in section six, six of the local coastal land use plan, there is mention of vulnerability maps. Um, Christian or Tina, would you be able to clarify that those vulnerability maps in the section six um, for the coastline resiliency that those maps will be updated and reviewed per site to identify as we move along with this local coastal plan um, that each site, if introduced into a new vulnerability area, um, will be considered. Uh, so if I uh, understand the question, um, I think as I uh, took it, you want confirmation that the maps will periodically be updated to reflect um, the evolving conditions along the coastline. And uh, policy CR-I-1 on packet page 312, um, that policy refers to the update process to reflect the best available science as um, the understanding of that and as other sea level rise related projections, for example, become better known and understood that the city should periodically update um, those maps to use the best available models and best available science. So it's safe to assume um, that the city will be referencing models that are indeed accurate to the best of technology's ability. I think that's a fair characterization, yes. Okay. Um, well, I have other questions, but I don't know if we want to take a linear approach, if anyone else has any comments on the vulnerability maps or anything. Well, any uh, any suggestions? I, I uh, well, Commissioner Bigstick, your light's on. Um, I don't know if it's a historical light. <laughs> no, I was going to ask a question, but I'd rather go along with Commissioner Berman's reasoning for the moment. Okay, sounds good. Um, I know that there is a question about the definition of redevelopment um, and in the um, consultation draft, I think it's page G-9, um, in the definitions, I know um, staff added a definition for the substantial um, improvements. Let me find it. I wonder if we could just kind of go over that just so everyone understands and it could be added to the record. Um, really what, what development definition or redevelopment definition triggers certain items? 
Sure, I'll do my best. It's, uh, it's a meaty topic, and I think it's really been at the heart of some of the community's concerns, as well as many of the comments from the Coastal Commission staff. And so um, I would ask the members of the team here to supplement my response as necessary, uh, but I would say to try to keep it uh, as simple as possible, the Coastal Commission has insisted on a definition in the LCLUP of redevelopment. And so we've uh, attempted to respond to that with a definition that we believe captures the range of activity that would be included in that. Um, we went beyond that, however, and revised our policy language to remove references in the implementing policies to redevelopment and to more particularly refer to it by a new term which we defined called substantial, um, substantial exterior structural modification. And that's on packet page 340. And so the policy language to implement that <coughs> um, references that specific term as it's defined and indicates that if you trigger the substantial exterior structural modification or SESM, uh, then the part of that development that's new needs to comply with all LCLUP policies, including hazard analysis. Um, it's clear that existing portions of the structure, which may be non-conforming with those policies, including setbacks, may remain as long as they don't make the non-conformity worse. And so that's been our attempt to respect existing development and existing property rights that are there on the site while indicating significant changes to the site, the SESMs, the Substantial Exterior Structural Modifications, those will trigger a hazard analysis and other LCLUP policy compliance. That's the compromise that we felt um, best represented um, issues raised by the Coastal Commission staff and uh, those important elements that our community and our decision makers have expressed throughout the, the public process. Thank you. Um, and then also there, I believe there's exceptions as well as if there's um, a natural disaster like a fire, you are allowed to reconstruct your home um, within 10% of what it was before. So, yeah, correct. So there are several critical exceptions in that definition of what a substantial exterior structural modification includes. And so one of them exempts uh, structures destroyed as a result of a disaster. And so they are allowed to rebuild as though they were existing development. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are several other exemptions, like a single-family residential exemption. So single-family residences would be able to rebuild. And that uh, provision allow, uh, includes that 10% allowance that you talked about. Okay. So within 10% of the height, bulk, or floor area of the prior structure. Great. Thank you, Senior Planner Murdoch. Can I also add, before we move on, that I think it's important to note that the exemption also includes... Um, development on any site which is protected from coastal erosion by an existing permitted shoreline protection structure. So uh, that's uh, attempting to address some of the major concerns we had from Sharp Park and other neighborhoods. And also um, any uh, non-structural maintenance components of the building so that we, we received concerns about re-roofing a structure or changing the siting of a structure are also exempt. Thank you. <clears throat> I had a quick question. I'm probably skipping ahead and not going linear. Apologies for that. Uh, regarding the Carlson property, the um, staff report, page 103, talks about... Uh, Yeah, talks, oh, I'm sorry, page 104, talks about the 1980 uh, local use plan and mentions it's commercial up to 22 units per acre. And you're referring to 22 units of residential? Correct. Per acre. And that was the 1980 local use plan. And what was the, was that was the plan that was approved by the Coastal Commission? So the 1980 certified LCLUP included a commercial land use designation for that undeveloped San Pedro Avenue site, mm -hmm. AKA the Calson property. Um, that classification was the city's uh, widely applied commercial designation, unlike the draft LCLUP, which has 
a variety of different commercial designations. All commercial development, by and large, was wrap, wrapped into that single designation, commercial. And th the LCLEP allowed mixed-use residential development up to one unit per 2,000 square feet of site area, which translates to 21.8, round up to 22 units per acre of mixed-use residential development in the same structure as commercial use above the ground floor. So it was very particular in the form of development of mixed use, as well as the density uh, as a maximum allowance of up to one unit per 2,000 square feet or 22 units per acre. Now, I think where some folks get hung up is the zoning which was applied to the site. I think there's you know, a discussion to be had about that, but that's not relevant to this conversation in the sense that we're talking about the underlying land use designations and the zoning which is ultimately applied needs to be consistent with that. And so it would be having the conversation in reverse to consider the CR or commercial recreational development, uh, commercial recreation zoning as opposed to the underlying controlling land use designation and that's what we're talking about in this document. <coughs> right. The, so the, and just, I'm just trying to understand it. So the, the underlying, the deepest underlying controlling uh, authority here would be the general plan, right? And so wouldn't the general, the general plan had this as commercial recreational initially didn't, and with no mention of residential, is that, is that correct? It's my understanding the general plan has the same commercial land use designation described in the context of the LCLUP. So the general plan and the 1980 LCLUP are aligned in the sense that uh, the language you see in the LCLUP is actually incorporated in the general plan, so they're one and the same. And I would argue that the general plan and the LCLUP are, are peer documents in the coastal zone. So certainly all of the city's actions need to be consistent with the general plan, but additionally the city's actions need to be consistent with the LCLUP, and so they're competing in comparable requirements in my opinion. I know there's a lot of difference of opinion on that, but uh, okay. That, that was a, uh, thank you for that. Sure, and I would just, uh, if it helps to clarify, for any coastal development permit the city issues, local coastal plan compliance is required. And so uh, while other non-CDP entitlements may require general plan compliance, um, to issue the CDP, which must accompany any development, LCLUP compliance is required. And so in that sense, they're comparable uh, peer level um, policy documents. And we just found the general plan map and it is commercial. It is commercial. commercial yes. Right. Um, thank you. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Nevelin. Thank you. I have, a, I guess, a, another question that uh, relates to the SCSM, the Substantial Exterior Structural Modification Definition. And perhaps this was covered before I got here. And got here in which case I apologize but really interested in is, is sort of thinking about existing structures and uh, sort of you know what constitutes um, removal or replacement of and, and percentages etc sort of the baseline date that we are looking at as we um, as we try to apply or as we move forward to apply this uh, the standard uh, assuming certification um, and it's my understanding that we would be talking about a, a baseline date that looks at sort of the uh, cumulative development as of the uh, date of certification of the, of the document as opposed to, for example, you know, the date of the adoption of the Coastal Act or something like that. Do I, do I have that right? Uh, you do. So the uh, SESM definition that's on 340 um, references the term existing structure, which is defined on packet page 335. And so the uh, operative date is certification of this LCLUP. And so measuring any change to the structure or whether a structure is considered quote unquote existing for purposes of the policies, it would be the date of certification of this LCLUP. So we would be looking, we would be forward looking in application of these policies and wouldn't retroactively apply them to properties which may have been developed or improved upon without full knowledge of um, these types of policies that are contained in this document. Okay, and thank you for the explanation, the explanation of the rationale as well. All right, I'm not seeing any more lights. Um, just as a, as kind of a, a broad, um, 
item to maybe discuss here is this was a this was a lot <laughs> of material and um, it was it was a uh, and, and it's because it, it's so thorough and it's so great that, you, that it's so wonderfully put together but it is it is a ton and um, some of the comments we received tonight from the uh, from the Golf Course Alliance were interesting. Um, some of the comments we got tonight from Carlson uh, were interesting. And um, my niche, my my thinking, um, and we heard one one uh, f f uh, comment uh, going to this would be to give us a bit more time to digest this, if we could, because uh, at least for me, uh, this was. This was a lot. I would love to take the comments that we heard tonight, kind of revisit them, revisit this package with those in mind. I know they came in written form, but they were extensive. <laughs> um, and um, my 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 suggestion would be to um, continue this item just for one more meeting, so we could really uh, dig it, dig into it. I also feel as if um, I, I, there's not enough, there's just, I, I'm, I'm skeptical that enough people have, have are clued in on this for some reason. I know, and I know you've done a wonderful job of putting it on, on the website and, um, and getting it out there, but um, the amount of comment, we've only got like a half dozen people commenting. It's amazing to me considering this is the local uh, coastal use plan. Um, so I'm just, I'm just worried that there, maybe there's, um, maybe just a need for one more round of, of outreach and maybe we could all do our part by getting it out into social media or something like that. And, but um, my, my suggestion would be to continue it just for, just for one more meeting. But I'm um, curious, what do the commissioners think? Uh, Commissioner Big Stick goes first. So I certainly uh, wouldn't mind more time to digest more, although the amount I digested I feel like was adequate um, one way or the other. Not that I wouldn't mind more time to study. I agree with you there, and if that's the consensus of the commission, I'd be happy to continue um, ingesting. That being said, my question for staff is, um, I know that at some point we were given a grant to accomplish this in a particular amount of time. And I also understand that this might have bearing on how quickly our general plan ultimately gets finished. So in the opinion of staff, if we do continue it for a couple of weeks, um, how detrimental will that be to the um, inertia of getting this accomplished in a timely fashion? So um, Bonnie will be able to answer your qu question about the grant specifically. But I will say that um, the uh, council does have some goals they're trying to meet in terms of completing the general plan on time and um, also the specific plan on time. Um, and uh, I think ultimately the goal, you know, is, is to get this to Coastal Commission as soon as possible to get the time clock running on um, the time that they have to hopefully complete their review, although they could extend their own time to do that. Uh, I don't think, you know, honestly, that two weeks um, is is going to have a significant impact on that. But there is, I don't want to say that there is not a um, a timing consideration here because there is certainly. And in regards to our um, grant that we received from the Coastal Commission, we completed our final task under the amended scope of work um, end of last year. So that grant has been fulfilled. So grant is secured, but um, council in theory is hoping to accomplish this by June latest. Um, so I wouldn't say th I wouldn't say that this this document we're trying to get to Coastal Commission earlier to to start their review in the hopes and maybe um, maybe it's a little bit of an ambitious hope that they will be able to provide us some comments or potentially even take this to their commission while we continue to work on the general plan and the specific plan. Commissioner Berman. Um, so you mentioned that council has a plan for the date that the 
local coastal land use plan, general plan, and chart park specific plan gets finalized. Do we know those dates? What are those dates? So it is by um, uh, June, the end of June, or, or in July. Okay. And so the Coastal Commission has at least 90 days to review and respond or approve, but they could extend up to a year. They could. Um, I mean, I think time is a good thing to consider, but personally, um, the two weeks or possibly three, if three or four, if council also pushes back the, their deadline, I mean, for me, it doesn't seem that significant in the grand scheme of being held by the Coastal Commission's um, undetermined schedule of reviewing, because it may be up to a year. Granted, that's a pessimistic outlook <laughs> and probably not what staff wants to hear. But um, I mean, I do share Commissioner Campbell's concerns with making sure that everyone in the public gets to come listen to our deliberation, review the document, provide comments. I know the majority of the comment period was over the holidays, which is pretty difficult for people. Um, in regards to making changes and for what I digested, sure, I would love to go through the document again. Um, I don't have any recommendations for major changes. I know one item that was um, brought up in comment today was considering heavier armoring or heavier considerations for coastline protection or considering managed retreat. Um, I do like that staff incorporated language in section six of the plan. Um, it's policy CRI-4. It's on uh, packet page 314. Um, I think this might have also been a previous comment at the Coastal Commission, but it, it provides a timeline of reviewing sea level rise adaptation, which is five years. So um, it, every five years, I understand that considerations of maybe do we need to change our approach? Do we need to look at new technologies? Do we need to up the ante on um, just whatever the plan is to help keep our people and property safe? Um, I like that added language and that makes me feel confident that I wouldn't recommend major changes, at least to this section. Um, but I am in support of uh, extending for the community as well as the commission. Uh, Commissioner Nevelin. Uh, thank you. Um, I was hoping to get a, a sense of kind of what the outreach process has been, at least uh, looking kind of looking at this uh, specific item. I, I mean, I know that there was a fairly robust effort to, to ensure that uh, folks in the community were aware of, of all this. And uh, so I'm, I'm somewhat interested in knowing kind of what that, you know, what was done. Um, maybe I'll just frame it for the moment to, to staff. <clears throat> well, I think the, the bulk of our efforts uh, involved trying to make sure that all of the relevant information was available to the community. Right. Um, since uh, the early part of 2019, we've uh, been promoting the planpacifica.org webpage as the clearinghouse, if you will, for information related to this effort on the general plan, the LCP, and the Sharp Park specific plan. Um, to supplement that place that we hope is familiar to many in our community now, um, we've also uh, provided announcements when public comment periods were available, uh, when draft documents were available through our Plan Pacifica email list, which I think is over 700 recipients now of folks that are interested in this material and likely to want to participate. Uh, we've also continued that effort on social media, Facebook, uh, Nextdoor, and our Connect with Pacifica uh, weekly city email newsletter. And so I think we've utilized the channels that we have readily available to make sure there's wide dissemination of the availability of this information. Thank you, and, and so it sounds like a really a good, robust work on the part of staff. Having said that, I'll agree with Commissioner, my fellow Commissioner. I was a little surprised, uh, even arriving late, at finding parking so close to the uh, <laughs> so close to the building. So, um, not quite sure what the uh, uh, 
particular um, particulars are this evening. Maybe it's the weather. Um, it's because it's a Tuesday. Well, that could be too. Um, <laughs> could be. Um, and, and I'm generally disinclined uh, with respect to continuances, just because I like to to see matters move forward. Having said it, I, I will also concede that this was a pretty heavy lift, uh, and uh, I, I will uh, concede in the spirit of confession that I didn't uh, read every last uh, paper in this binder. I, I looked at a lot of it, but uh, probably would not be a bad thing to have a little more time if that was the direction folks wanted to go in. Commissioner Pickstick. Within a context of um, public attendance that is so low, I'm in disinclined to engage in a conversation as robust as something like those dreaded uh, two words managed retreat. Um, in general, I'm disinclined to talk about those two words. I see how much consternation they cause in our community, and I think that um, when delving into a document like this, which is not easily ingestible in five days, um, as somebody who uh, has been appointed to take as thorough a look as I'm capable and deliberate as much as I'm capable. Um, some folks have admitted to being brand new to the process and might look at a document like this. And um, I know that if I wasn't up here, I'd probably take a look at it and think to myself, okay, I'll listen to staff, I'll listen to the commission. I'm not gonna look very deeply into it. Um, and it's, it's daunting, no matter what perspective someone's coming to it from. <clears throat> that being said, um, earlier when going over ideas of um, transfer of development rights and as uh, Commissioner Berman mentioned earlier, um, CRI-4, uh, I saw this document as um, being a, a much tighter balance than I think the normal public discourse is in terms of property rights versus we need to figure out managed retreat. I think that there's a lot of nuance in this document that lends itself ultimately toward taking steps toward managed retreat if that's a thing at some point we decide as a community we want to do. Whereas right now holding off on that and figuring out just to try and keep our community secure is the first step and then once we figure out that security then figuring out what steps out the door we could take if that's what the science bears out is I think the approach we're taking. So transfer of development rights is something that hasn't been talked about tonight, which I think is a step in the direction of incentivizing folks who um, see it as a more pressing issue for their own properties. And I think that the, I have to keep going back to it, CR-I-4 um, necessitates reassessing things every five years, which I think is, um, or sooner, depending on what's going on. And I think that five years is a reasonable amount of time um, to come to a conclusion and get something done between this moment and when we're coming to that conclusion. So what I personally would like to see, which I did not see in there, um, is something that tells us that at some point there will be a, a public um, a public reassessment, uh, the, an opportunity for the public to see that yes, over five years time, this are, these are the studies the city's done, these are what we've monitored, this is the science we're looking at, and these are the conclusions we've come to. And whether or not that's at a city council meeting or a planning commission meeting or what have you, I'd like to see um, integrated with CR-I-4 something that ensures that there's um, uh, an obvious publicly transparent um, perspective on the way the city is engaging and reassessing, which is what that one in particular says. So that's as far as I've gotten on that particular topic. I dread even thinking the two words of. Um, and after that, um, I, again, if there's consensus to continue this, I'd certainly um, take the time to read a heck of a lot more than I have already. But to my satisfaction, um, and my thought process being it's probably in front of city council when the real fighting amongst the community is going to go on. Um, and what I would hope is 
rather than a fight, just conversation and perspective sharing. That's probably where that's going to happen. So I go along with consensus, and those are the entirety of my thoughts right now. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Kraske. Yep, I'll keep it short. Um, I'm also in agreement with the commission here in uh, continuing this vote to allow more time for digestion and, and public comment. Just a clarifying question. I, we had a period for written comment that's uh, closed, um, so I, I, I don't take it by our motion that we're suggesting that staff should reopen that period because it would impose additional work on staff to uh, review and uh, respond. It's not to say that we might not see things that uh, forwarded on to us, but uh, sort of the notion of expecting staff to respond to further written comment, uh, I don't think I'd be in favor of that necessarily. I'm in total agreement. Anyone else? I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, given that it'll be another item on the agenda, on a forthcoming agenda, I guess, um, will we have to accept um, comments from the public? I guess like written comments based off of the forthcoming agenda. Yes, yes, we, we will forward any written comments that we receive and obviously you'll have oral communications as well. Right. Um, I, I think what I'm hearing is that the, um, the expectation that there would be a major rework of of the document is is not anticipated and that perhaps you'll be keeping your your binders and we would just be supplementing that with any of the comments that we receive and anything that we need to address that we may see so in those comments that sounds absolutely right from my perspective it looks like i'm here i'm mm -hmm. getting nodding heads so yes thank you for that clarification well, if anyone would like to make a motion, Commissioner Bigstick. Um, I'm not prepared to make a motion yet, but getting back to my original less weighty question in the beginning, um, I just want to see if there's consensus. Staff recommends granting uh, the property owner for the cotton crustacean um, as a mixed land use, mixed use neighborhood land use designation. Is there consensus that that's um, a thing we want to do? So then I just. Well, if we were going to continue the item, it seems like we could just include that in the, in the conversation of, uh, uh, upon continuance of the item. The reason I ask it now is so that when it comes back to us, there's already a motion prepared with that in it so that that language is already there and we can not have to expend brain energy on it. That's if that's. Well, it's not before you um, as a separate item. I, I'm. I'm I think what uh, Commissioner Bigstick may be saying is that you would request that there be some deliberation on that tonight. No, I'm or asking that we deliberate on it now so that's in the motion in front of or, us or by the time we get here. perhaps that the document itself be I um, see. So revised to reflect that, although I, I'm not, I, I do note that at least one of our, is it one or two of our colleagues who are not here who might have a, a view on it uh, upon the opportunity to be, uh, to be here if we're going to continue it. So I, sure. I'm, I'm frankly, I'm not, uh, opposed to what you're suggesting, I just would note that there may still be some benefit, perhaps to having alternate language available that we could switch out uh, rather than just making the change. It would be helpful to me as somebody who otherwise would probably try to wordsmith it in real time and asking the city attorney to help me with that, et cetera. Mm -hmm. okay. Conceding that the answer is probably in, in here. <laughs> we need to read it, <laughs> but yeah, so. Um, Okay. Well, if anyone wants to make a. And I would add that we would need it to be continued to a date certain, and the first meeting of February is uh, Monday the 3rd. Sounds good to me. Anyone else? Is there availability on that day? For as far as the agenda? For, yeah. <coughs> yes, we do have the availability on the agenda. Okay. I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, I move that we continue the um, review and deliberation and consideration of the local coastal land use plan uh, post consultation draft to the future planning commission meeting scheduled for February 3rd. Been a motion and a second. Oh, Commissioner Neville, 
Is that you? Okay. I'll second the motion. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Please vote. All right, that item has been continued to the February 3rd Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. Uh, onward to communications, commission communications, anyone? Commissioner Big Stick. So I uh, acted as Planning Commission liaison to the meeting on January 13th um, regarding accessory dwelling units and junior accessory dwelling <laughs> units. Um, I was asked a question to try and help clarify some confusion about 10-foot setbacks and did my absolute best through my own confusion being the less technical of all of us, but I, it all worked out well in the end and council um, went ahead. Um, Thanks for doing that. Yeah, no, no problem. I do have one other thing. Um, tomorrow night in Half Moon Bay at the library at 6 o'clock, the um, county's Planning Commission is going to be convening to um, to look at a uh, affordable housing project in Moss Beach. Um, I believe it's called uh, Cypress Point, and through Midpen. Um, so six o'clock, Half Moon Bay Library. If anybody is interested in affordable housing, and there being affordable housing for the region, which has the potential to ease um, housing issues in our own community either sending um, <clears throat> communications to the County Planning Commission now or attending the meeting at the library tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in Half Moon Bay uh, would be a great way to encourage affordable housing being, being built in our region. And that's about all I got. Thank you. Um, no one else? I've got one uh, thing to make after three terms, surviving three uh, council votes uh, in 12 years up here. I'm not gonna uh, sign up for a fourth term. So I think my, uh, as a courtesy to the department, I think my term ends in March. I think the same as Clifford's and plan to relinquish the reins. So just wanna let you know so uh, you can plan accordingly. Thank you. onward uh, I don't see anything else so staff communications um, well on that the um, the recruitment has opened <laughs> for um, the Planning Commission uh, the due date I don't have on the tip of my fingers right now but it is sometime in early February um, but you can check the city clerk's uh, website or page and uh, you can find some information there if anyone in the audience is interested Oh, and thank you. <laughs> next, uh, next Wednesday, we have a meeting at uh, Little Brown Church to discuss uh, the Sharp Park specific plan. Everyone is welcome, and the start time is 6.30, January 29th. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we have reached that point. Commissioner Neblin. I'll move we adjourn. Commissioner Big Stick. I will second. Got a motion second, please vote. Passes unanimously. Thank you, good night. It would be hard to replace. Okay, here. Oh. Uh, the Cypress Point project. Uh, yeah. I'm well, a civil engineer so on it.